All right, well, I want to welcome everybody to using the PVWatch tool for easy solar assessments. Uh, so this course uh, is brought to you by the Green Home Institute. Uh, Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. And today I will be your moderator. My name is Brett Little, and I am the executive director here at the Green Home Institute. Uh, this course is approved for one hour in continuing education units, GBCI, AIBD, uh, Certified Green Home Professional, uh, uh, Nary Green, and BPI non-whole house CEUs, as well as approved for AIA HSW, which may make it applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. Uh, do you want to uh, see greener and better homes for all? Uh, and if you're tired of registering for every course, you can become a member today, get instant registration, uh, instant signed certificates for CEU, um, and also discounts on green building certifications and other uh, benefits. And a quick, quick word from one of our sponsors. Uh, this session is brought to you by GeoComfort. Help your clients live a zero energy and healthy lifestyle with GeoComfort geothermal systems and featuring a renewed 30% tax credit um, for these geothermal or ground source heat pump systems. And our main sponsor today is Shrinergy. Shrinergy has mobile solar generators. Uh, these generators, the most powerful solar generator, yet still only weighs 20 pounds, capable of satisfying the demanding need for camp trailers, home appliances, uh, days at a time. The generator is versatile as it is powerful. For the ultimate in emergency power or camping luxury without the hassle of traditional fuel power generators. This kit comes with all solar panel cables you need to get started, plus a wall charger, uh, connected to the SolarStorm 100 panel and fully recharged to solar generators within 15 hours of ideal sunlight. Uh, and here's some of the uh, recharge times, two to 24 hours, wall plug four to eight, car four to six. And then here is some of the uh, times that, uh, you know, certain devices take to recharge with um, getting out of a full charge of a battery 33 hours on 18 cubic uh, Energy Star certified uh, refrigerator. Um, sure Energy, with years of experience in renewable energy industry has developed solar microgrid kits as well with lithium ion based battery storage for the US, Caribbean, Central and South American markets. Um, based on highest quality PV panels and hybrid inverter technology, uh, that's available to the industry. Their kits provide rugged durability, long life, and reliable performance day in and day out uh, to help keep electricity going for your clients. And also, if you're in Michigan, you can get paid to go solar. Uh, if you uh, have anybody located in these particular utility uh, areas that are in colors, um, reach out to Shrinergy today as they are looking to develop solar sites um, and pay uh, for that. All right, so this session we're going to be talking about um, sort of that question that comes up for everybody, um, whether they're doing a new build or a renovation or have an existing site, and that is, does solar work on my site? And that's a really big question to ask, and you might not know where to start. Um, so we're going to be discussing an easy tool uh, that was developed by NREL to really start that conversation in a less invasive way if you want to start exploring that for yourself or for your clients. Um, so I'm real excited to uh, have uh, uh, Paul uh, uh, Gilman here. Uh, Paul is a technical writer and trainer and has worked on projects for the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL, and other clients since 2002. He has written documentation for NREL's System Advisor Model SAM and PDWatts and for the HOMER. Paul designed and facilitated dozens of training workshops for energy professionals around the world and has provided technical assistance to project developers in preparation of feasibility studies for renewable energy projects. He has a bachelor's of science and technical engineering from the University of Washington and a BA in music performance from Oberlin College. So with that, Paul, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks for joining us and take it away. Great, thank you, Brett. Thank you, Brett. And thanks to the Green Home Institute for inviting me to uh, speak to you all today. And uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, NREL's PV Watts model. I'll start with an overview, a uh, basic overview of what PV Watts is, and then go through the basic steps for using PV Watts. Then I'll switch over to the PV Watts website and give you a live demonstration. Uh, and then I, 
I want to spend a little time talking about the weather data behind PV Watts, um, and then I'll finish up with some additional PV Watts resources and um, and a discussion of other of other NREL tools. Okay, so we'll start with the with the overview. Um, and as Brett mentioned, if you've got questions, um, just go ahead and type them in, and and we'll pause uh, throughout the session here to to, to answer those. Um, so this is. Uh, what PV Watts looks like. This uh, is a web-based application. It's a free online calculator for photovoltaic systems, and it's uh, developed and distributed by the Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL. So it, it just requires a few simple inputs um, to describe the location of the photovoltaic system uh, and the system itself. And it estimates the monthly and annual electrical output of the PV system. So that's basically what PV Watts does is uh, use a few simple inputs to model a PV system and give you monthly and out, uh, annual output of the system. The production estimates are based on an hour by hour simulation for one full year. Um, that's an important point and it's not immediately obvious when you're using the model or when you're using PV Watts that it's running uh, making calculations on an hour-by-hour -hour basis for one full year. Um, the, the production estimates account for solar irradiance, so the solar energy available at the site, and also for the cell temperature and the module cover optical characteristics. Um, there are other effects that are not explicitly accounted for um, in the internal cost calculations of the model, and for those, you, use, uh, you specify a system losses value. And I'll show you this in more detail here in a moment. So a little bit about the history. Um, PV Watts first went online in 2000. Um, it was adapted from PV Form, which is a model for photovoltaic systems developed at Sandia National Laboratories. Um, Sandia is a sister lab to NREL. Um, and the original version used the NREL TMY2 weather data for 239 locations in the US. Um, the latest version, we up, which we updated earlier this year, uh, is based on the new, the newest uh, weather data from the NSRDB. Um, so this is high resolution weather data that covers the entire US, um, parts of uh, the rest of the Americas, and also South Asia. We'll see maps in a moment. Um, but that's a big difference as we have weather data for, for every location in the US now. Um, and it also, it uh, uses an updated model for the PV system. So we took the original PV form model and, and made some changes uh, to reflect advances in, in PV technology in the last, last uh, decade. All right, so let me go through um, the basic steps that you go through to, to, to use PV watts. And I will, um, I'll go through these steps um, in PowerPoint first, and then I will uh, go live with PV Watts so you can see what it actually looks like. Um, so the first thing you do is you specify a location, um, and you can do that by uh, typing a complete street address or just the name of a location, a, a town or city name. Um, you can, if you have the latitude and longitude for your site, you can you can type that in, um, and then. As I mentioned, uh, we, the, the lo location or the weather data covers uh, the U.S. and also some parts of the rest of the world. Once you type in that street address or your location, PV Watts uses a geolocation service to convert that address into a latitude and longitude pair, and that's shown on here on the Solar Resource Data page. Um, and then there's also a distance in miles. Uh, between this latitude and longitude and the, la and the latitude and longitude of the address that you typed. So that's because the weather data uh, represents uh, four kilometer by four kilometer squares um, on the surface of the Earth. And so this latitude and longitude pair is the center of that square. And it's, it, um, it's not exactly where your street address is. So in this case, it's the, the center of that square is, is 1.4 miles from the actual location that you're modeling. 
Uh, then you go to the system info page where you provide those basic parameters describing the system. Um, so the, the main one here is the system size in kilowatts. Um, and, and, uh, and then you provide some other ones, which I'll, I'll show you in more detail here uh, in, in the live demo. Um, and then you go to the results, and it shows you the, the annual, total annual output of the system. So these are AC kilowatt hours. Um, and then there's the total kilowatt hours produced by the system by month and also a dollar value. Um, once you, after you generate that, those results, then typically you'd want to go back to your inputs. Um, I mean, if you're just if you're just trying to get a rough idea of how much electricity a photovoltaic system would generate at a given site, you might just be satisfied with this this initial run. Um, but if you're if you're uh, trying to get a little bit more accurate um, assessment, um, then you go back to your inputs and refine them a little bit, um, and so you can. Uh, uh, adjust the system losses. Um, the 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 system loss is a percentage, uh, a single percentage, um, but we have a, a loss calculator that that cal calculates this total system losses from sort of a more detailed breakdown of loss categories. Um, so you can use the loss calculator to refine the system losses number, um, and you might do that if you're modeling microinverters, for example then there wouldn't be any mismatch losses, um, or if you're using DC to DC converters as well. Um, or if, if the estimates just seem too high or too low based on your experience, uh, then you can come back here and, and make an adjustment to the system loss. Um, there's also a set of advanced parameters, um, um, and, and you can use these parameters if you're interested in modeling uh, AC power clipping, um, or for self-shading for one-axis trackers. And I'll come back again to, to these in a little bit more detail during the demo. Um, so when you're working on the web, website, there's a couple of ways to navigate through the pages. Um, there are these big orange arrows, which are hard to miss, but there are also these tabs up here, um, which, which aren't as obvious, um, but you can click these to go back and forth um, between the different pages. And then if you're, uh, if you're ready to start with a, a different system or want to start your analysis over again, then you can uh, either just click the, the title here, PV Watts Calculator title, or click Change Location, and that takes you back to the front page. Now, PV Watts has a, a pretty extensive uh, set of documentation, um, so you should uh, be aware of that and use, use the help system to uh, find out about both the inputs and the results and to get additional information. So I want to spend a minute talking about the dollar value here that, that uh, PV Watts calculates. Um, it's based on the elect, uh, retail electricity rate, um, which is one of, one of the inputs that you can um, provide. So for, for a lot of uh, people, you're probably just interested in the AC energy, and you can just ignore this dollar value altogether. But if you're trying to get a sense of how much uh, you'll save on, on your electricity bill, for example, um, you can use this to get a real rough estimate. Um, all it's doing is taking the total monthly energy generated by the system and multiplying it by this flat retail rate in dollars per kilowatt hour. Um, so this would be equivalent to having a PV system that never generates more power than, than the, the building consumes. So there's no excess generation. Um, and also uh, an electricity rate. Uh, so the, the, the building owner is paying a flat rate for their electricity. They're, they're not getting time of use rates or tiered rates. Um, uh, so if, if, if that's the scenario, then this estimate is, is a reasonable way to calculate the value of the electricity. But if you have time of use rates, um, if, you're, if you have excess generation, then, um, then th this is an incomplete estimate of the value. Um, and then the other thing I'll mention about this energy value is that, so we calculate the monthly value by taking the total monthly kilowatt hours and multiplying it by this uh, flat rate. That gives us 44, 48, and so on per month. 
And then the annual value is the sum of these uh, monthly values. So if you multiply the annual total by the rate, you're not going to get the exact number here. It's a rounded, rounded number. So we have two significant digits here. So this number is really good. It really is equivalent to you know, an estimate of about $670 annually. Um, I see a question here. Are these numbers only for year one of the system? And the answer is uh, not exactly. Um, we're, uh, the, the weather data that we use is called typical year data, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. But the weather, weather data uh, is not for a specific year. It's sort of an average. Uh, represents the average solar resource over a multi-year period. Um, so uh, in that way, this, the AC energy and the, and the value isn't representative exactly of one year. Um, but but the, the rate, the calculation here is, would be based on, you know, it's, this is, the, this is the, the production in January, the average production in January over a multi-year period, uh, and that, value multiplied by 11 cents per kilowatt hour is $44. Um, so that's for, that's the way the, the calculation is done. If you want to do more sophisticated um, calculations for, for uh, that accounts for time of use rates and, and for excess generation and for multi-year cash flows and so on, then you could use PV watts um, in with SAM, the System Advisor Model, which is another uh, piece of software developed by Enel that I'll mention later. So the default electricity rates that PVWatts displays come from uh, a database of, of these flat rates for uh, both residential and commercial building types for all the uh, utility service areas in the U.S. So when you when you Put, type an address in in PV watts, it comes up with a, a rate um, for either residential or commercial based on your address. Um, but you can also override that default value by typing your own value in if, the, if this value isn't appropriate for your, your analysis. 